Hey, it's Matt again, and in this video, we're gonna design and build a new flight simulator for streaming. Turns out, this thing back here doesn't really give me the frame rate and the resolution that I want. I'm gonna use what I use on the Mac, and that's Ecamm, and I'm gonna set everything up so that it works with the Mac, which means I get to build a flight simulator using my Mac, which is great. So I'm gonna give you guys some of the pros and cons as we go through this. I'm gonna use my existing monitors. The only thing that we're really gonna add to this is a, a touch screen. Now this is a mock-up. What you're looking at is a mock-up of my my sim right here. This is the sim that you're looking at on paper. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna take all of this stuff over here, the G5s, the GNS 530, 430, the 350, 500, the transponder. We're gonna move all of that into an air manager uh, setup. And yes, we can get air manager to work on a Mac. And yes, we can get an obster to work with that touch screen on a Mac. And yes, the touch screen will actually work on the Mac. What's going to be streamed is going to be the monitor. So you guys are gonna see everything, but I'll be able to manipulate everything on the side with the, the touch screen and the obster. Here's the two monitors and my laptop over here and what's gonna be on those. So I'm gonna be running X-Plane 11 or 12. Second monitor is basically gonna be so that I can kind of monitor everything that's going on with the live stream, be able to theoretically chat back and forth. The camera sits up here, same place it's sitting right now, sitting here talking to you guys. Here's a shot, here's what it looks like uh, right now. You guys can kind of get an idea of what, what I'm dealing with, the two monitors, the camera, the microphone. Guys, there is, there's a lot going on and really I want to get rid of this micro, I want to get this microphone out of my way. So I've got a plan for that. We'll catch up with that here in just a second. But basically we're going to take this and turn it into what you're seeing on the screen right now. This is my knobster uh, right here, the recreation of that and right here. So for this one, we're gonna break out the Logitech, the SciTech yoke, and everything's gonna work out great with that. It's pretty loosey goosey compared to a, a Yoko. As far as the throttle quadrant, break out the real sim stuff. We'll have flaps, we'll have a trim wheel, we'll have TPM, all the way push pull knobs all the way across and both of these items are desk mountable So let's talk about the air manager and how we're gonna set this up. We're gonna set up the G5s and the 530 430 uh, or a Basically a shell of the 530 430. It's possible We might be able to get the pop-ups to fit right over the 530 and 430 So it'll be right there, which will be great And then we'll have the audio panel the autopilot and the transponder things that we're possibly going to run into while we're using this for a flight simming adventure uh, and live streaming, you know. I did set this up back here uh, just to see if it would all fit. And guess what? It does. Fits nicely into a 15.6. Starting with a new desk, this is completely optional. I can probably set the majority of this up using this existing piece of crap desk that I've already got. Not that one. That one's good. That one's really good. Now, a big difference with this, we're not going full panel like we did with this one. I'll probably be looking at like a 15.6 inch. I'm not going to go, you know, real expensive on this if I can get away with it. So I'll probably try something like this out. Something with good ratings. Something halfway decent. Grab yourself a powered USB hub. It's going to be very helpful. Of course, we've already talked about the monitor. This is StarTech USB 3.0 to HDMI adapter. This allows you to use the DisplayLink technology to... Uh, if you're using an M1 Mac, if you're on an M2, I recommend, if you're like, I need to buy a Mac for this, get an M2 chip. It's got four screens at minimum, native, built in. You don't need this, okay? Me with my M1 over here, I need this in order to continue to add those. That's an expensive <laughs> uh, adapter, but it is what it is if that's what I need to, to make this work, right? If you need it, great. If not, don't worry about it. I'll leave links down in the description for that as well. Then you need Air Manager. You're gonna end up with uh, the desktop version four and you're gonna be able to build and customize your own panel experience. So you're gonna wanna get the Knobster with this, okay? These will work with uh, at least desktop, at least Air Manager works with Mac, so I don't know why this wouldn't work with it, um, but it does work with the Mac, so we're gonna find out because I'm probably gonna buy another one of these with another license for for Air Manager. I'm good, that's right, I'm gonna need two licenses, one for that uh, setup over here and another one for this setup over here just to make this work so uh, definitely go to sim innovations check that out play around with it it's going to give you a lot of versatility when it comes to building your flight simulator especially a flight simulator on a mac all right i found this on etsy and this is a knobster mount it's made 
specifically for the uh, the uh, Honeycomb Alpha Yoke and the Bravo Throttle Quadrant. It does not have to be specifically used with the uh, with the Honeycomb Alpha or the Bravo Throttle Quadrant, as long as you can mount holes into whatever it is that you want to plug that sucker down into, you should be able to just drill holes and mount it. So if you feel like drilling holes into your desk or somewhere else where you want to get creative, which is probably what I'm going to do, I think this will make a perfectly good option. Uh, we talked a little bit about the Elgato microphone mount. Very optional. You definitely don't need this um, for a flight sim, but as somebody who's going to go into live streaming like this, it might make my life a little bit better. But really nice setup. Um, if you want something that's out of the way, it, that looks halfway decent, and will give you that clear look for your desktop, I might actually grab these Elgato lights at some point. If you're going to do this, you need a desk with a lip of about 1.5 inches. You just want the support to go all the way across the bottom of the desk, but you want it to sit back at least like 7-8 inches. That way you have room to mount things. Everything that I'm going to mount to the front of the desk needs to be mountable, but the desk that I have here, uh, the lip or the mount, the metal support structure underneath here is maybe... Uh, about that far under there so it's going to create problems which is why i might need a new desk which is also the same reason that i built that desk uh, from scratch using a butcher block from home depot in order to build that flight sim over there so yeah that pretty much uh covers it all i hope that you guys followed along with all that i want you guys to design your own flight sim if you guys are in the design phase if you're using a mac um then it, you know maybe you need some monitors a pc or a mac maybe you've got half of that stuff you've got the desk the monitors and the mac then all you need to do is figure out what your peripherals you need to do this is the fun part so if you haven't gotten that far yet i'm gonna go into purchasing mode here pretty quick and start grabbing some of this stuff so that i can make a future video and show you how this whole thing turns out design yours grab a copy of keynote or powerpoint and start designing grab a piece of paper out of your printer and start drawing pictures of what it's going to look like and what's going to go where do your research get on google get on amazon and start finding those items that you want to use in your flight simulator that's how you're going to build the best flight simulator for you okay so that's how it's done be creative design have fun enjoy the process hit that like and subscribe button leave a comment down below let me know if you have any questions let me know about what you guys are going to build we're going to run pilot edge i'm going to go out there and do some flights with you guys hopefully all right take it easy i'll see you guys in another video see ya hey if you haven't already done so head over to elitesimbuild.com grab a copy of our home flight simulator resource guide do that thing where you click the button give us your email address and we will send you a copy of our simulator guides where you can get the resource list, the avionics reviews, a panel blueprint. So that way you guys can send that off to your panel guy, get all the parts and pieces that you need. You'll know exactly what software to pick up so you can get your Cessna 172 flight simulator built today.